kids are on a team they're proud of, and they're proud of working hard every day and learning characteristics like responsibility and punctuality and friendship and loyalty and things like that. And I think that was impressed early on that, you know, Puno Volleyball won. And if you wanted to be part of that, by necessity, you had to understand the idea of being part of a team. You know, it's about the journey. It really is. And, and as a player, it's hard to see that. As a coach, it's a little bit more apparent. The boys that we had, they were willing to work hard because they knew the tradition. And so we just had to push them, you know, and, and really work hard and make it hard for them. You get to know the program, you know, it becomes a part of you, and it's really easy to assimilate. It's the same thing, pretty much, that you left. It hasn't really changed that much as far as what's at the core. When you put on that jersey, it represents decades and hundreds of players who have made this program what it is. And a lot of other programs can say that, but there is just something special about this one. I never looked at it that, okay, I gotta go coach. It was always like, oh man, I get to do this. It was always fun and games, and, and um, it was pretty neat. It was pretty special. Warriors now, a little confusion by Walton and Love. Olivia McLaughlin, Alverson, he's handcuffed in the back row, and put a hole once again, champion of State Boys Volleyball. In Hawaii, it's really indigenous in so many ways. The fire departments would play it as part of their fitness programs, and they'd be playing it back in their yards. It's a big part of plantation life. They'd play it on the grass. And then on the beaches of Hawaii, where there are coconut trees around, they'd just throw a rope between two coconut trees, and they'd play there. So it really was a sport that was very, very, I would call, indigenous to Hawaii, and uh, hence we got a jump start on the rest of the country. In its initial stages, it wasn't much of a sport. Not like it is today, where you get the crowds and the people and the enthusiasm and the, and the scouts and the scholarships. Volleyball then was, uh, oh, you play volleyball, it was kind of like, oh, you poor sissy. <laughs> you know, that was their image. In Hawaii, volleyball has been a very popular sport in local gyms and in club teams and things of that nature. The development of the Punahou players really came from their playing at the Outrigger Canoe Club. And the outrigger had two sand courts. So lots of the outrigger paddlers, canoeists, beachgoers, played volleyball. And the Board of Athletic Directors agreed to start boys volleyball and girls volleyball in the fall of 1961. People started to appreciate the, the speed of the ball and, and the toughness of it. People started to come to the games. Well, when we played, it was 1961-62, and volleyball was real simple. Pass, set, hit, two setters, no quick hit or no jump serve, you know, no combination plays, no back row attack. The style was very, uh, very much slower than today. It was um, less powerful. The sets were more horizontal and the sets weren't as fast. And the defense in those days, we, we didn't really do a lot of rolling and diving and acrobatic moves. That was really introduced in the United States. Uh, as a whole uh, in the late 60s and early 70s. It was just simple, fundamental volleyball.
by the time I got back into volleyball, it was the um, fall of 72, the sport was very different then. It was really much more physical. I remember it being a real challenge to teach all those aspects of the game, whereas before we didn't, didn't go to the floor, we just sort of stood up and played. It was a very different game. Back then, we didn't have the jump serve, it was a floater, but the offenses were becoming a little more fast. Uh, it was on the beginning end of, you know, running the quick one, which the Japanese introduced, uh, and the sets became lower and faster, but, uh, not, not like they are now. The jump serve has changed the game. Japan putting it in the Olympic Games had a huge impact, especially here in Hawaii the diving and the rolling and all of these things that people really were kind of opened their eyes to it. That, in a way, kind of raised it to a certain level. Players started getting bigger. You know, we started drawing more basketball players. We'd convert basketball players and that worked out. The 72 team was the first one that kind of broke the ice. They were pretty talented, but that was a challenge because we hadn't won in many years and so it was, that, was, that was tough. We finally won the ILH, so we qualified for states. Uh, Puno had never won. We had gone to the finals, but never won. Uh, we ended up beating Hilo in the finals, two out of three. They beat us the first set, and then we, we won the state championship for the first one. Yeah, you really can't explain winning for the first time and being the initial part of a tradition that's gone on for 33 years now. Once we won, that attracted a lot of probably fringe players. Oh, do I go out? Do I not go out? Do we have football? and they were struggling a little bit at the time, or do I go out for volleyball? We got some fringe players that really made a big difference. I didn't have to do a lot of recruiting. They just said, hey, can I come out and play? You guys look like you're having fun, and you know, can I be a part of that? And in 73, 74, we had some teams that were just really loaded to the gills with players. I remember taking a team to Canada. I took 16 kids and just sort of divided them up equally, and we beat everybody we saw up there, and they were, we played some pretty good teams. At the end of the season, got called up to the varsity team to to play in the state tournament and had a great experience. Uh, Chris was the coach and, and both the Rigg brothers were playing and Jay Anderson and you know all three of those guys went on to play at Pepperdine in, in a national championship. I saw a little action against Hilo in kind of a crucial match and as a junior um, and a senior started on, on state championship teams. In the fall of 75 we, we had a drop off and and we really only had two really strong players who had played a lot. It was just, it was just the way the cycle went. Scott Rigg was, was one of the guys that was really instrumental in that. He had to pick up the load and, and work a little harder. That team was a little bit wobbly. Um, we wobbled a little, but had a great state tournament. I can recall you know, having a really good semi, uh, I guess I think it was Roosevelt, and a good final. It was when I, I think that, for me at least, I, I really, really got the bug. I was in some big matches. I was starting on a big team, and that was when I decided I wanted to play in college. I inherited an unbelievably talented group with two tremendous leaders, Peter Ehrman and Peter Balling, were the captains that year. That's the good side of it. The downside of it was they were almost all seniors. <laughs> we had this great first year, and then we were out of it for three or four years before we got back and won a state championship. I was really excited to play for Jam. I, mean, I just remember being so awestruck at like how good they were and all the players were, and I remember talking to him and and watching Roosevelt my freshman year win states and the Velasco brothers played for them and just thinking those guys are so good you know how are we ever going to compete with them and, the, and he really did a good job of instilling confidence in us and saying yeah they're good but they're not unbeatable I mean you guys can be that good or better. Now there's some unsung sort of heroes there in the middle that, that don't show up on any state championship teams but for three or four years it was a, it was a hard long haul to, to get back.